Hello and welcome to the Parenting Tools podcast. My name is Jason. And my name is Jordan and this is the podcast where myself and Jason talk about the hilarious chaos and the relentless beauty of being dads, baby. <laughs> being baby daddies. <laughs> So, George, what's going on? It's warm, isn't it? It's still warm. Very warm. Can I tell you something that we didn't touch on last week, which I need to just get off my chest? You you started like this last week. Yeah. This is a bit of Dave vu. <laughs> it's all the time. Um, so you mentioned that was a bit of a bit of flash, flash storming, some rain. Yeah, we didn't come back to the flooding. So the thing is, I live at the bottom of a hill. You can probably see where this is going. Yeah. And we had quite an intense, like, flash flood storm gale. Like, it was, there was like a river outside my house. Yep. And the problem is, is that right at the b- bottom of that hill is my garage, where we record this podcast. It's where it's my office, where I keep a bunch of stuff. Electricals. Electricals. And uh, there was an inch of water in the whole thing. Oh, you sent me a video. Yeah. And it was torrential yeah. <laughs> it really was and what made me panic is that it, it tripped the electrics oh nice so i thought there was electrics on the floor something's broken and uh basically i had to come out while it's still raining with like a m- weird contraption that i'd made to lift all the you're water so, out bloke making <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a panic i just i was literally just like siphoning out water for about two hours oh and now it stinks. You could have got yourself on the local news. That's <laughs> a little camera. Yeah. When it's rain like this, it's always like you get X amount. The measurement is like X amount of months rainfall. Yeah. X amount of minutes. We have three months worth of rain in 12 seconds and like all that kind of stuff. And I must admit, it was worse. Like I put sandbags at the, at the foot of the garage because I was scared about this happening. You really could have got on the news. Yeah. <laughs> but outside the garage, genuinely, it was up to my ankle. Wow. And so I was, that's what I thought was inside the garage. So once I'd like cleared all that water, opened the door and I was disappointed, but relieved. Disappointed. Disappointed. I was like, oh, I just hope the sunbags have worked. <laughs> disappointed because you've got really good house insurance <laughs> and you're looking forward to a few upgrades. <laughs> Act of God. Oh. <laughs> but it, it's just, it just reminded me of those things. Like when you're a parent, you often you don't have much space in your life for things to go wrong. That's like, if you've had like a, a lack of sleep or just you're at the end of your rope, there is not a lot of wiggle room. For things go you wrong. are normally at capacity. You, you're at capacity. You are on the edge of losing it. That's a really good point. And uh, that, that dawned on me for the two hours that I was siphoning out water. Just scooping. Yeah. <laughs> just scooping away. But everything's fine. Nothing broke. Apart from a squidgy floor. Apart from a squidgy floor. Yeah, it's it's all and a smell, a damp smell. So I'm probably gonna have to rip up the flooring so it dries out. Again, what a bloke! I'm not looking forward to that. You just call it a sensory floor. <laughs> sensory <laughs> smell. Oh, there's all the senses in here Ooh. tingling, <laughs> exotic. Um, my little girl has recently been asking to go for wee wee on the potty milestone. Little milestone, okay. yeah. Um, hasn't yet done one, but she's so, asking. But she's asking. <laughs> So she would like to sit on the potty and then tell you to sit next to her. She'd go, Daddy, and she'll like oh, yeah. to, to sit there on me. But the other day, she went, one wee-wee. Cool. You want wee-wee? Yeah. Took her to the potty, sat her down, then went and sorted Luke her out. My mother then appeared. I was like, all right, let's get your nappy back on. So pulled it up, but she had a, a wet leg. And I thought, I'm like, this might have, might have happened. Might have done a wee on the potty. So I went there, no wee. <laughs> But a wet floor <laughs> next to <laughs> next to the potty. It's close enough. That's, that's a win. win. Yeah, that's, that's a win. We are edging forward. <laughs> so yeah, she's still not done one, but she, it's just so cute. She sit she sits on the potty, and then daddy, and I'm, I'll, I'll say to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Little rest. Yeah. Do you know what's funny is that if you're not a parent looking into this conversation, we on the floor being a win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't the carpet as well. There you go. <laughs> well, the same floor, different day. 
<laughs> I was uh, I was working from working from home with the kids in uh, Leanne had a work thing and I just had to keep them entertained for a few hours. Um, but I was working and I had a call come in and I saw them going upstairs, and it was one of my company directors. I've got to take the call, and I heard the stair gate close upstairs. So I thought they're okay. Had the call, said oh, I'm just going to go and quickly find my kids now, and they were in the bathroom. And do you know the toilet brush? Yeah. It was on its side. Oh. And the happy game went away. Flop. I will I'll leave that there. Oh, it's another it's a- sensory flop. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, we've all heard that through pregnancy, women's taste buds can change. Their yeah. preferences can change. Madder than it. Before having a baby, they love ham. Yeah. Since having a baby, they can't stand the stuff. You put something on the notes, which I'm intrigued of. I used to love popcorn. You used to love popcorn? Yeah. Nothing it changed. changed. Nothing, kids. <laughs> Nothing better than Friday, Friday night film, get a bit of popcorn, cinema style. But they just spill it <laughs> everywhere. And I just can't stand the stuff anymore. I'll eat it. Don't get me wrong, I'll, I'll, I'll eat it and I'll enjoy it. But every time I see them with popcorn, I just think, and it's only popcorn they spill. You give them a drink of juice, they're fine. But Gener- generally speaking, they don't tip their juice every time. They don't tip their food every time. They tip popcorn every moving time. <laughs> and just, every two centimeters, it's down the side of the sofa, it's on the floor, and it's so sticky. And then generally you hoover it because it's quite big. Yeah. Blocks the hoover a little bit. Oh, dude, that's popcorn, though. Here's a... Uh, I do love it. I here's, can't stand it. It's a top tool. Tada tool. Oh, we were there. Sweet and sort of popcorn with a minstrel. See, I've got... In the same handful. Really? Mm. See, I've got a thing with sweet and salted. I don't like it. Oh, I absolutely love it. Just give me salted. Sweet and sort of popcorn. Sweet. And some chocolate. Oh, it's lovely. Same mouthful, man. All in. Yeah, all in. It's It's lovely. Infused. Honestly, highly, highly recommend. Really? But here's a... I'm going to have to come up with a new name for for like this part of my, my segment. Cautious Calvin. My name's not Calvin, but I'm being cautious. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, popcorn's a choking hazard for kids. Hesitant Heron. Hesitant Heron. Yeah. No, yeah, apparently popcorn's a choking hazard um, because obviously the kernels that haven't popped, sometimes if they swallow that, their airways are only a little small. Yeah, well, for babies, yeah. Little, little, little. At what point is a child not a toddler anymore? That's a very good point. Four. Four. I'm going to say four. Because someone asked me the other day how old my son was. I said, oh, he's nearly four. And I asked, so he's you know, just out of that toddler phase. And I thought... Actually, no, that's a bit too... I, I, I thought, I, I don't want to, I, I want him to be a toddler. I don't want him to be not a toddler. So my daughter's three. She can take herself to the toilet. Toddles there. She doesn't look like a toddler anymore. Like, she's, she's on the verge of child. Yeah. What comes next? Is it just baby, toddler. newborn, or newborn, newborn, baby, toddler, child, N- potato, newborn? <laughs> yeah, I think that's the four stages of childhood. Idea. <laughs> uh, see, I, I'm not comfortable with that. I, he's he's my little boy. He's my little toddler boy. Little to- he's, he's, I'm not about to say he's getting on. He's not getting on. He's, but... yeah, he's <laughs> he makes a noise when he sits down. So, oh, now nah, I'm going to go and... preschooler. Pre, that's, there we go. I can sit in that. Toddler preschooler. Yeah. You've heard it here first. The official. The official. <laughs> it is official. The official category. It's guaranteed. <laughs> Jace, this week we've got a guest. We've got Christy joining us. I'm excited for this. I'm excited. Christy is TikTok famous. TikTok. Oh, that's not a... Uh... No, and she would hate us saying that as well. <laughs> <laughs> but we will let Christy tell you all about who she is, what she does, and why she is TikTok famous. Let's jump in. <laughs> Before we continue with today's episode, let me tell you a little bit about Audible. As a parent, you know that bedtimes can instead of being a nice peaceful end to the day, they can instead be a tiresome battle that your child always wins. This is where Audible comes in. There's a combination of things that have genuinely been a lifesaver to us in our household. Audible and a pair of wireless headphones. My wife and I each take one headphone and just like that, we've transformed those solo parent missions into an experience that we can both share at the same time. 
even when one of us is stuck in the baby room for what feels like hours, we're still able to feel connected, engage in the same stories and the same experiences. Instead of feeling isolated in separate rooms, we're exploring magical worlds or solving gripping mysteries together. All while our little one is being gently rocked to sleep whilst the parent doesn't lose their mind. I use Audible most days. One of my favorite books that I've listened to with my wife so far has been Harry Potter. Imagine this, your little one is finally settled after gently rocking them to sleep for 20 or so minutes. Their breathing is getting deeper and slower as they're still in your arms. Meanwhile, you're in the heart of Hogwarts, entranced by Stephen Fry's amazing narrative voice as he brings to life the world of Harry Potter. I've listened to 44 books over the past 12 months, and right now, Audible are offering a 30-day free trial with one free audiobook, which you keep even if you cancel your trial. You also get free access to the Plus catalog for the whole month, and if you're already a Prime member, you get two free books during your trial. You can sign up using the link in the description or on our social media pages. That's all for me. Back to the episode. Welcome to the pod, Christy. Christy, thank you so much for, for coming on. Thank you for having me. And thank you for your patience while me and Jace have been faffing. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so for, for the listeners, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you and what have you got? Okay, so my name's Christy and I'm 28. Uh, I'm a youth pastor, obviously Scottish, but I live in Western Supermare just now, um, which is great. We love Western. And what have I got? Um, I've got a husband and um, a one-year-old son. My son is called Murray. Um, I hope you can understand what I'm saying. I didn't think of the like <laughs> accent barrier when I called him Murray living in England. Like Everyone always thinks I'm saying Molly. Um, I've had Murphy. I've had Maurice. Um, so we just go along with whatever, <laughs> but it's called Murray. Um, yeah. So that's what I've got. Murray. That's such ah. a proper Scottish name. Isn't I know. It? I had to. I had to. Uh, but so you, did you say he's one? Yeah. He's just turned one two weeks ago. Oh, wow. Oh, well, happy birthday. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> but how, how has, how, how has the first year of motherhood, parenthood, having a child been? Mm. The first year is mad, isn't it? Like, they all tell you your life's going to change forever. And you're like, yeah, yeah. And no, but it actually does. But it's so good. Um, I think you just kind of get used to like a new normal and you get used to it like quite fast. Like, um, I don't know, the first kind of maybe month bring it after I brought Murray home. Um, I don't know. I remember like I was waking up at half five in the morning and then I just wouldn't stop until like, 11 at night and me and my husband Connor we'd done all the chores and we're like is this how long our days are going to be but you just get into a swing of it you learn how to like navigate the new normal and so yeah it's really great um I do I do love having a son it is cool and did you find out before that you were having a boy or was that a surprise on the day yeah I don't like surprises I found out <laughs> as soon as I could so yeah no I always thought I was gonna have girls like there's just there's so many girls in my family and then we got told we're having a boy so I was yeah I couldn't imagine myself as a boy mum but now I want like three boys so I'm a changed person (laughs) that's amazing so did you grow up with sisters I've got one sister yeah Yeah. but um like cousins and everything we just seem to have a lot of girls but yeah yeah oh superb so so you've got one sister so it was the two of you growing up Mm mm-hmm but you want three kids. Yeah. So normally people will kind of go for like what they grew up with, don't they? They're like they like their childhood and they'll try and recreate that. What's kind of making you think you want to throw an extra one in the mix? Just fun, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got a sister, but there's 11 years between us. Um, so I'm, I'm older. She's like uh, in her teens now. So I don't know. Um, Although I was our sister, I felt like our other mum at some points because there was such a big yeah. age gap. So I kind of want for my kids to be closer in age, and yeah. And yeah. That's 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 quite positive though that you've you've had one and you feel like already you want to go for three. Whereas, well, like, <laughs> yeah. don't quote me on that. Like, <laughs> it's out there now. <laughs> no, I'll see what two is like first, and then yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so you the, uh, live- the jump to two is quite daunting. Oh, <laughs> great. 
yeah we first started this pod about i think eight months i think after we'd we'd had our second and mm-hmm. i was just like it's painful um <laughs> i think physical and emotional pain is what i said um nice. but now a year down the line it's 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 amazing it's the best thing ever and you know i wouldn't wouldn't change it for the world it's it's incredible mm-hmm. having it together mm-hmm. but i want three wow <laughs> That remains that remains to be seen. But Chrissy, uh, you, you mentioned that you live in Western Supermare. Mm-hmm. So for our non-British listeners, our international listeners, that is, it's not close to Scotland, is it? No, it is a seven-hour drive. So, yeah. <laughs> so how it's have a you long found, way. How have you found that having, you know, your first child and being, you know, completely other end of the country to your family? Mm. Um, It's been... It's been fine. I think you just get on with it. Um, Has um, like being a mum impacted your job or your perspective of like managing teenagers in in, in any sort of way? Um, I don't know in terms of, like managing teenagers, but in terms of my job, like I just kind of brought them everywhere with me for the first while. Like um, I was on maternity leave, but was I really? Um, I was <laughs> technically, but I couldn't really stay away. Um, so I gave birth on the Monday and then we were at youth on the Thursday. We brought Murray with us. Um, and he was at youth every week ever since. Um, it was great. I just, yeah, just bring him everywhere. He's quite the social boy now, <laughs> which is really good. So, um, yeah. Yeah. We were the same. I, think, I can't remember what day we gave birth, to be honest, but two or three days later, we were in church and everyone was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, my, you know, my wife felt great, and she felt up for up for it. Mm-hmm. And she said, "It's either sit at home or or go." Yeah. Uh, and then, like looking back, we went into lockdown six months mm. in. So you know, we're glad we we took in places because it was yeah. before too long. We couldn't. Mm-hmm. No, but that's mm. that's awesome. And so, like all the all the young people and everyone at church are really supportive and kind of helping you out, which is great. Yeah, it's really good. Mm-hmm. So, C- Christy, what was your like birth experience like? Mm-hmm. Um, so it was actually very positive, which is good because I was like on TikTok and on like YouTube trying to find like positive birth stories because I was like, <laughs> and watching one born every minute, like for anyone listening who's going to give birth, just don't bother watching that. <laughs> <laughs> it was not how mine went at all. Um, so basically, uh, kind of near, I think it was 35 weeks. Um, baby was measuring small and they were a little bit worried about why that might be. So, um, they induced me the week after, which was a shock. So I still thought I had like a month left, just over a month left. But, um, they said, no, you're going in and we'll induce you. Uh, and I don't really know what that meant <laughs> at the time. Um, cause the, nar- the woman who was telling us we were going to get induced, she was like speaking to us with like our eyes shut. She was one of those people. So I looked at Connor and she was talking with her eyes closed and I was like, does it like, does this mean like giving birth? Like, is that what being induced means? So basically she explained it all to us and said, yeah, because he's small, we're going to induce you. And, um, so they took us in a few days later and everything kind of, how do I put it? There was a lot of things that could have potentially gone wrong with him being small, with him being early. Um, but we went in and I worry about a lot of things. Like I'm just kind of a natural warrior. It's not, um, the best part about me. But with this, I don't know why, I just felt a piece about it. I just knew that everything would be fine. And I don't know what that was, if it was God. Um, if, yeah, I just felt that peace going in. And so um, I went in and they, I don't know how graphic you can be, but they put, they put like water balloons essentially into you to help you dilate. And they were meant to stay in for like 24 hours, but they stayed in for two. And then they came out and they I dilated and it all went really fast. And then they took me in and um, they said, well, you're ready to go. We just need to wait for a bed for you. And they didn't have one ready because they were expecting me to still be um, dilating for another like day. So we just took a walk into town. I went to Primark um, <laughs> because my feet had kind of swelled up. So I needed new sliders. So we went to Primark, went to Starbucks. Um, it was funny because I was in the queue for Primark with my, with the stuff I was buying and obviously heavily pregnant. And the lady in the till was like, Oh, I need you. And I had the wristband on. I was like, all right now. <laughs> so it was, <laughs> yeah, it was funny. So then I just went, I walked back up to the hospital up this hill with Connor and 
um, gave birth. <laughs> it was, <laughs> how was that? Um, yeah. And it was, yeah, although he was early, um, because he was early, uh, we had to stay in a couple of days just to make sure everything was fine. But yeah, basically what had happened was my placenta wasn't working as well as it should have been. So that was what was slowing down his growth. So he came out at the right time. Um, but yeah, it was just, I, I loved it. I loved giving birth. It was for me just a really good, a good time. I loved it. Um, I did have an epidural as well. So I was tuned to the moon, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's such but a funny no, story. I know it was honestly, it was really good. And my friend's pregnant now, and I'm like, honestly, don't worry, don't watch one born every minute. Like, I know every birth is different, and I know other births have complications, and I'm not naive to that. But um, yeah, I think just having the peace of God on my side really helped because I was really surprised that I wasn't worrying. I worry about every stupid little thing, but with this, I was like, I know that God is going to protect us and look after us. Yes, that is so good. That is like really entertaining, but also amazing <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> you just, uh, just went to Starbucks whilst technically giving birth. Yeah, pretty much. And you got yourself some new sliders out of it as well. I did. I know. Great. <laughs> so I didn't. I didn't realize that's kind of how induction worked. Because yeah, same. But <laughs> I thought. I thought they'd give you some tablets or an injection or something. So did I. I didn't realize water balloons were involved. No, I thought it would be like an injection until she took me to this room and was like, here you go. So, oh, yeah. So did, did she get you to swallow the water balloons? How does that work? Uh, no, <laughs> unfortunately not. That's, that's crazy. Mm. Yeah, that's wow. Didn't expect that. No, same. <laughs> So that's probably why I want three kids as well. I'm like, oh, it's easy. So hopefully the next one's um, all right whenever that time comes. But yeah. <laughs> that's really cool. And so he's a year now. What kind of, what are, what is he doing around the year? I can't really remember it all goes so quickly. What What's he doing? What stages is he in? Yeah, he's on the move, um, which is fun. So we've just put baby gates up everywhere, um, baby proofing <laughs> the whole house. Um, he's on the move. He's starting to copy, which is really funny, uh, really cute. Um, he's also at nursery. He's been at nursery since um, he was seven months. So yeah, he's he's loving that as well. He did. He got in trouble at nursery for the first time last week, which was very sad. Um, basically, because he's he's trying to walk. He's not quite there yet, but he's like sofa surfing. So he's pulling himself up and like walking along the couch. But um, he got in trouble from the nursery teachers because he's trying to use the other children to pull himself up. Um, <laughs> you're not allowed to do that. So he's like using their shoulders and their head um, to help them up. But yeah, he's not allowed to do that. So I've got a serious question. What accent Sorry. is he going to have? Oh, don't. This actually is serious. <laughs> like <laughs> <sighs> The amount of people. Yeah, that's the one thing. Got nothing against the English. In fact, I love the English. I love living in England. But the fact that my son was born in England and will have an English accent. What is what is the Western accent? The, um, is it's it, quite what, what neutral, this? thankfully. It is neutral. But, but yeah. it's not Scottish. It's not Scottish. <laughs> it's, not Scottish. It's, <laughs> it's not Scottish at all. We did, we did joke about sending them to like boarding school in Scotland, but that's not funny. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> We're not going to do that. There's a TV program on CBBS called Molly and Mac, uh-huh. um, and it's uh, it's a, a Scottish town. So if you want him to, you know, grow up learning some some words, watching some Scottish TV, Molly and Mac on CBBS. That's that's your one. Wow, I did not know that. And I was saying yeah. before you came on, like I've not, I don't really watch CBBS, but I'm gonna now. Like I've got to. <laughs> a couple of good songs on there as well. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, That's he's going to have an Australian accent at this point because Bluey is just <laughs> 24-7. <laughs> yeah, big big fans of Bluey. Yeah. Um, I, I have a genuine question. Like, So okay. you're you're on TikTok. You've got quite a, mm-hmm. quite a few followers on TikTok. You put a lot of content on there. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I saw, which I'm confused about, you wake up. Do you wake up before your son? Yes. Why? So just, just for the listen, what time do you wake up? What time does your son wake up just talk me through that morning routine because when i watched it i was like <laughs> like uh, bemused but also slightly in uproar uproar <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry okay um yeah so i wake up 
mm, between 5.30 and 6. And then I wake Murray up at 7. I mean, <laughs> wh- why? What do you mean, why? <laughs> is Murray a good sleeper? He can be. Generally, yes. Um, he used to sleep through the night, but just now it's like so hot. So he's up mm. like, I don't know. It can it can be like two or three times a night, but it's just for like a drink, um, like for two seconds. But I don't know, it's still like broken sleep. So I'm not up for hours in the night. But yeah, me and Connor take turns um to just I don't know plug the dummy in and he goes back to sleep. But yeah, it's just it's so hot. But he usually is a good sleeper. Um, so I, I think are you are you getting like a eight hours sleep or are you getting like four hours sleep and still no, getting no. up really early? <laughs> no, I get. Like maybe six or seven. Six, yeah. uh, six or seven. Okay, that's all right. Because there's so many parents that'll be listening to this whose kids wake them up between five and six, and they're thinking, "I wish I could just sleep till seven. So, what is it that kind of motivates you to get up before him and deprive mm. yourself of sweet sleep? Yeah, don't get me wrong. Like there are days where I'm like, "Oh, I could just snooze my alarm," but um, I don't know, like. If you watch my TikTok and um, Instagram, whatever, I'm up quite early and I do that to to spend time with God. Um, for me, I don't know, the people who know me really well watching this when I say this, like, without Jesus, I'm not a great person. <laughs> like, there's things about myself that I just, I don't, I don't like, like, I can be very snappy, impatient, um, easily angered, which I don't know. I know, looking at me now, you'd never think it. But uh, yeah. And spend the time with Jesus, just, I don't know, I, I know when I've spent time with Jesus, I feel that, I feel different in myself. I know that I've been with the God of peace. Um, so for me, it is, it's just a really important habit and it's something that I, I will do every day because I know that it brings me closest to Jesus. It makes me a better person. It makes me a better mom. Um, and I get to spend time with God. So I, I did. I did try to like change the rhythm. I'm like, I could do it at the end of the day, but it just it doesn't happen. Like, I think by the time you've gone through your whole day, I sit down in, in the bed and I'm just absolutely shattered. Like, there's no way I can read anything, or uh, if I pray, I'll just fall asleep. So for me, the morning is the best. I need to get up and eat out of bed. I need to make a drink first just to wake myself up, and then I've got that like hour to just sit in the presence of God. Um, which yeah, it's just it's so needed for me anyway. So that's that's cool. That's really cool. I think for a lot of our listeners that aren't Christians or churchgoers, they might see that and think, "Oh, that sounds a little weird." But when you mm. take a bit of a pan out, a lot of people start their day with a meditation, or they start their day with a reflection. Mm-hmm. That's kind of your, your approach to do that, but from a Christian angle. Yeah, yeah. I also think like being a mom. Um, or or a dad and, and working as well, you do not get a minute to yourself. And I know if I get up the same time as Murray, that's it. We share our day. Um, so even just getting up that little bit before him, it's just a time where you can be on your own and you could just have that space. Um, and I really, I really enjoy that. So if it has to be at five thirty, then it's at five thirty. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I find that so fascinating. So for my my daughter's not a fantastic sleeper. And we were in, we're three years in, mm. and so I will take whatever sleep I can get, mm-hmm. <laughs> right to the max. Like, and my my wife to the extent that we have a deal, me and my wife, that I do the mornings, wh- whatever okay. it comes. So she gets extra sleep because she cannot cope <laughs> like without mm. that that beautiful sleep. But like, what I found is like, especially when your kids get older. So my my daughter's three now. When we get up, we'll do breakfast, and she'll quite happily sit and just mind her own business for like twenty minutes. Mm. eat her breakfast and look after herself and that's that for me has gained back some of my just that time for myself yeah um, a mental space um, i know others as well would use that time to go to the gym that's stupid in my decision in no, my opinion. I, I agree <laughs> i am trying to go to the gym more but not that early anyway back <laughs> to the topic i just i just find it fascinating that parents have so many different like perspectives and also like experiences of sleep like especially mm. that when you like for me looking at someone who gets quite happy with less sleep than is required um i just i just find it fascinating yeah i know i was at a conference last week and i was speaking to this guy who's got a daughter and he's like yeah i can quite easily run on like four hours and i was like oh my goodness like i wish i could do that but 
no, I can't. Um, but I am aware as well that things are going to change, routines change. And for me, I think that was quite a struggle to start with because pre-baby, when all my time was my own, I had my routine and that's what I stuck to. And I, I, I thrive off routine. I'm not that spontaneous. I, I like to know what I'm doing. I like to know what's happening. But it doesn't work that way with a baby. Um, so this is my routine just now. And this has like changed so much ever since I gave birth. And so I think it's just about being flexible. I know it's going to change. I know he's never going to stay in bed till seven all the time. It's just, but this is what's working just now. Um, I just need to be flexible for whatever change this boy brings me again next time. So, yeah. <laughs> and it shows, it shows the importance of your faith to you that you sacrifice the most precious commodity to parents. <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is sleep. I think, I think that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, oh, no, that's amazing. So just for our listeners, if they want to find you on like TikTok, how would they go about doing that? You can find me. My name is Messy Bible Pure Heart. Uh, that's on Instagram and TikTok. So feel free to follow along if you <laughs> wish. <laughs> I showed my wife your page over there. I said, oh, I've got um, Christy coming on the pod. And uh, she was like, oh, my word, I want to do this with my Bible. And oh! she just like, <laughs> took the phone out of my hand and just started scrolling. Because my wife is very much like you. She's a planner. She's mm-hmm. organized. She has a script and she tries to stick to it. Um, and she loves like journaling. Everything's color, like colorful. And, her, and when I showed her your page, she was like, this is awesome. Christy, we always ask our guests before they leave for one nugget of parental wisdom. Is there anything you would, <laughs> you would share with our listeners? <sighs> mm, let me think. Um, I suppose for me just now, and this has only struck me in the last like week or so, is that they pick up on everything you do, like everything. Um, like for example, I never realized how much I was on my phone until I gave Murray. Do you know those Mister Kipling like angel slice cakes? Um, mm-hmm. I gave him one of them to eat, and he used it as like a phone. And I'm like, oh my days! They pick up yes. on everything and they copy everything. So I don't know. My advice would, would, or maybe not even advice, but it's just um, to be the best example you can be to your baby. Like your baby just loves the bones of you. Um, it's mm-hmm. it's like an unconditional love. He's going to love me no matter what, which is amazing. I just want to be the best example I can be to him uh, in whatever way that is. So they're always watching. <laughs> Oh, always watching <laughs> yeah Wazowski <laughs> oh, amazing thank you so much Christy well thank you for having me it's been good thank you so much and uh, yeah hopefully we'll speak to you again in the future when two and three come along well maybe who knows 